Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we'll be reviewing the Dinosaurs Will Die Quan. This board features Dinosaurs Will Die's action camber, which is traditional camber past the inserts, then it flattens out, and there's a small little rocker section right before the up kick in the tip and the tail. This is gonna give that load and pop of traditional camber, but with a longer flat spot, so the way that it activates is gonna be a little different and how it engages its pop and snap. And it's gonna give you a little bit of ease of entry in and out of the turn up at the tip contact point, as well as better powder float. This board is available in 152, 155, 158, and 161. I rode this board at Copper Mountain on a sunny bluebird day with colder temps. There was chunder, ice, frozen corduroy, fresh corduroy. It's kind of just a mix of those early season conditions. And I rode it with my Rome black label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. This board has a slightly past middle of the road all mountain freestyle flex, making it just a hair stiffer than some other boards on the market. What you get is slightly softer tips that stiffen up through the middle with a fair amount of torsional flex. At high speeds, you do get some chatter that resonates back underfoot out of the tips. And then you got this center section that's predominantly stable due to that camber section. When you get into really rutted out terrain, if you're not paying attention, you'll get knocked around. So remember to keep those knees bent and just be aware of the fact that this board isn't gonna just plow through everything in its path. It more or less wants to just roll up on top of it. So if you're not paying attention, you're gonna get bucked around. This board has solid snap to it. What's nice is you load up that camber section, it hits that flat part of the board and that turns into a springboard effect on it. So it just wants to snap up in the air. It's very easy to load the camber section of this board. It doesn't really take much effort. So you're just rolling along, you hit a cat track gap, you pop, you're in the air, you hit a side hit, you're in the air, a roller, you're using it like a lawn ramp. You can just sort of ollie over anything in your path. When it comes to jumps, this board wants to get in the air. It has no qualms about it. It snaps off the lip, it gets up in the air, and it lands perfectly. That flat section creates a little bit more stability. When you put it down, you notice that it just feels a little bit more locked in. What's nice about this board is you have that flat section to that micro rocker. That creates a jumbo sweet spot to really lock into butters. Get out over the nose, get sideways, feel it lock in. It'll hold till whatever you want. And then you can pop out of it because that camber will act like a little bit of a spring. Same thing with the tail. This is one of those boards that you can get sideways, revert around, do whatever you need. It locks in, but it still retains that snap. So it's not one of those boards where you just sort of roll back and you're lazy with your butters, but more like you ollie into it, land, it locks, it holds, and then you spring out. The same can be said about how this thing jibs. It locks into those presses and holds it all the way through the feature till you get to the end. Then you can snap out of it. When you get sideways, you got this camber section through the insert pack, which allows you to just lock in around the feature. You feel it hug as it slides sideways. You don't really have to worry about anything with it. It gets the job done. It does what it needs to do. This board rolls in and out of carbs with giving it a smooth transition from toe to heel back and forth. And it has just purpose and power behind it. It doesn't feel like you're overbearing or domineering with it. It just lets you know like, hey, I'm gonna go carve and we're gonna do this. And you're locked in as you swoop from one side of the trail back to the other. And that happens with short, quick carves or long, hard, drawn out ones. It doesn't really matter with this board. It just wants to turn and stay locked in. You got that camber section to load up and push into, which gives you that flat section off the tail to help slingshot it out of deep, aggressive carves. Who's this board for? The all mountain freestyle focused rider. In my opinion, this is the best version of the Quan to date. They did switch factories to Playmaker from the mothership. And what's nice about this board is it's predictable, it's reactive, you know what you're gonna get with it. It feels like a board that you've ridden for 200 days, it's well broken in, 
but it still has that snap and power you want out of it. Now one of the funniest things I've ever been asked about this board is how it would ride switch because it has one millimeter of taper. If you can't ride switch on something with one millimeter of taper, you shouldn't be asking that question. I'm just putting that in this review because there's someone out there that'll probably look at that one millimeter of taper and freak the fuck out and say that they can't ride switch on it. Comparable boards, the Capita DOA, the Rome Agent, the Jones Mountain Twin. This has been my review of the Dinosaurs Will Die Quan. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications, that way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you wanna support us further, Swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video. Mm -hmm.